Good day, my friends. Walter here. Uh, today we're going to be seeing about installing a new carburetor on uh, this wood chipper. But before I get into that, I'm going to explain a little bit about how I screwed up my old carburetor. I did a pretty good job of cleaning it. And I watched several videos on YouTube on how to do it, and there's some very excellent videos out there how to clean these different kind of carburetors. Many of them are very similar. Well, there's several on the little carburetors like this. I'm going to go to this extra extreme of telling you how I messed up my carburetor, just so maybe some of you won't do the same as I did. Now, when someone let me dump some of these parts out here. When you clean this carburetor, which was all gummed up with varnish, you got to clean this little hole out right here with a torch tip cleaner, which I did. It was completely clogged. Well, the first time I put the carburetor together, the only reason it wouldn't run was because this was clogged. I didn't, I hadn't cleaned that out. I cleaned everything else pretty good. Well, in the process of learning this, I went in there and watched several videos on YouTube about how to clean a carburetor, although I had already cleaned it. And something in one of those videos caused me to screw up and I'll, just, I'll explain it to you. All this was really nasty. I cleaned it out. Got a new bowl gasket for that. A whole new carburetor kit. Well, they sold me the wrong carburetor kit. And the needle valve, this little needle valve here, goes right down in this hole here. And the float attaches to that and raises it up and down and shuts off the flow of fuel as long as that needle valve is hitting that seat in there. Fuel, we're looking at it upside down, fuel comes in through this line and flows into the bowl and stops when the bowl is full because this float lifts up and shuts off the flow of gas. Remember that little needle valve right there. You gotta clean that, clean all this out with carburetor cleaner. Now, almost every video I looked at shows a little gasket. See this little round gasket right here? It's a seat. It fits down in this hole right here on most of the carburetors. Yeah, I watched one video that said dig it out like this with a probe and put the new one in there. Another guy took a screw and put down in there and screwed it in with a screwdriver. It pulled up and a little gasket came out stuck right on the end of his screw. Well I tried this, but you can look down in this hole, I don't know if the lighting is just right or not. And it looks like brass down in there, which it is. They didn't show another carburetor like this on YouTube. It didn't really have a rubber seat like that. Everybody said it's got a rubber seat, you gotta change that. This one don't. It's got a little brass bottom in there. And when that needle valve goes up and down in that hole, the little rubber tip on here plugs up that hole and stops the fuel flow of gas. Well, in the meantime, I thought, well, if they say there's a rubber gasket in there, there must be a rubber gasket in there. I dug and pulled and poked with this thing trying to pop it loose. By then I had already scratched up the little seat in there. I said, well, maybe it's just real tight. I took a little cheap metal screw and screwed that down in there about a half a turn and gave it a good yank. But all I succeeded in doing was tearing up that little rubber seat in there. So eventually, I didn't realize I had done it at the time. You gotta really look at it with a magnifying glass to see how I screwed it up. I put this carburetor back on the wood chipper, completely installed and put back together. I finally decided 
that either that rubber gasket dissolved, melted, or it don't take a rubber gasket. Well, common sense would have told me it don't take one. I tried like heck to poke that little red gasket down in there. It won't even fit. It's too big. Anyway, I wind up going to a new carburetor shop. Lawn, wind up going to a new lawnmower repair shop. And uh, he put an air hose tester on here and pumped it up. Put the little needle valve down in the hole. Which essentially would stop the flow of coming through. But he pumped his little ball up on there and it put a little air pressure in there. And you could hear the air coming out around this needle valve. It wasn't seated because I screwed it up with a screw or dug in there and damaged it. Other than that, my carburetor cleaning would have worked just fine if I hadn't have messed with that seat. So when I put it on the machine all reassembled, it's on there like this. Well, the float came up to shut it off, but it couldn't shut it off because it was leaking by. So by the time I goofed around, checked the oil, and got ready to pull the rope a few times, gas was flowing out this end because it was just flowing right on past the stop. It was flooding everything. Gas was coming out the air filter. Well, that can't be right. So I disconnected the fuel line by uh, pulling up on the hose and draining all the gas that I had put in there to stop it from leaking. And what I'm afraid of, oil might have got in the oil on my wood chipper. I'll have to check the oil before I actually try to start it because some gas might have got in there. So I wind up buying a new carburetor simply because I screwed up the seat. Uh, you need to make sure when you buy a carburetor kits for these carburetors to get the model number off your engine. The model number is on the valve cover on these overhead valve engines, Briggs and Stratton engines. So you'll be sure to get the right carburetor kit. Most of the gaskets are all the same anyway. Anyway, that's how I screwed up my carburetor. In part two, we'll be assembling the new one. By the way, my new one is not totally assembled. I got to assemble it and put it all together. So we're gonna clean up and move all these parts. And in part two, we'll be trying to assemble this new carburetor. On the new one, I got to put the choke plate in there. I gotta put all this stuff in there. I gotta put just about everything inside the carburetor the title. Anyway, hopefully some of you will learn how to clean your carburetor without screwing it up. Thanks for watching.